Hello friends, this video on photosynthesis in higher plants part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So we will now discuss non-cyclic photophosphorylation. I hope you have understood whatever has been explained so far because if you have not, please review and only then go ahead because now as we go ahead, things will gradually become more complex. So let us see what is non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Now in this process, as I said, here what we have to do, we have to synthesize ATP in presence of light in a non-cyclic way. That is the starting point and the ending points will be different. So in this process, both PS1 and PS2 are operational and they work in series. That is photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. So photosystem 1, what was photosystem 1? It was that photosystem which was good at absorbing a light of 680 nanometer and photosystem 2 was the one which was good at absorbing a light of wavelength 700 nanometer because both of them have different reaction centers. Now here both the photosystems will be operational. So here PS1 and PS2 are connected by electron transport chain. So what is that electron transport chain? So it is something like this. Let us suppose this is PS2, so this is PS2 and this is PS1. So we have both the photosystems. So PS2 will be at first, then it will be followed by PS1. So both the photosystems will be working here. Light will fall on both the photosystems together. So it will fall on this photosystem as well as it will fall on this photosystem. So what will this photosystem do as we have observed the behavior of photosystem when light falls on this photosystem, all the pigments will try to absorb light energy. It will pass all the accumulated energy to the reaction center and the reaction center will send an electron. So it will send an electron and this electron will pass through an electron transport chain. So this electron transport chain will connect the two photosystems. So electron from photosystem 2 will travel through the electron transport chain to photosystem 1. And what is the result of this process? The result of this process is ATP will be produced as a result. So ATP synthesis will take place. NADPH synthesis will take place. So NADPH will also be produced as a product. So these are the two things which will be produced at the end of non-cyclic photophosphorylation and that is our aim. So this non-cyclic photophosphorylation is basically the light reaction and the result of this reaction is ATP and NADPH. So this ATP and NADPH which will be produced here, they will be utilized in the dark reaction to synthesize sugar. Right? So now our aim is to understand this non-cyclic photophosphorylation in detail. That is how it travels through the transport chain, why it travels through the electron transport chain, how ATP is produced, how NADPH is produced. We will understand all that. Now, how, why it is a non-cyclic process that you understood? Because it is starting from here. So this is the starting point, PS2. And what is the ending point? The ending point is PS1. So it starts from PS2 and it ends at PS1. So it doesn't come back to the starting point. That is why it is a non-cyclic process. So let us try to understand the process of non-cyclic photophosphorylation step by step. So it is a multi-step process as I said. So we will jot down all the steps on this slide and then we will discuss each step in one slide. So the first step is electron excitation in PS2. As I mentioned, it all the story starts with PS2. So when light falls on PS2, electrons get excited. So that is the first step. Next is electron transport chain. So this electron passes through the electron transport system. Splitting of water. What is splitting of water? Now when the electron is lost from PS2, somebody needs to compensate for the lost electron. 
So that compensation is done by splitting of water. Now, how all these things are done, that we will see when we will discuss about them. Now, I'm just giving you an idea. Where are these steps located in the process of non-cyclic photophosphorylation? Next is chemoosmotic hypothesis, that is ATP synthesis. Now, where is ATP synthesized? When the electron passes through this electron transport chain, meanwhile, ATP gets synthesized by a process called chemoosmotic hypothesis. Now, what is that chemoosmotic hypothesis? We will learn about that. NADPH synthesis. What is NADPH synthesis? The, from the electron transport chain, the electron will reach PS1 and from there NADPH will be produced. So that is NADPH synthesis. Now these are some of the steps which all together completes the process of non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So we will start discussing about each step in detail one by one. So we will start with the first step that is electron excitation in PS2. How the electrons get excited in PS2. Now here this also we will discuss step by step. Now where is this electron excitation? Where is this entire thing taking place? This non-cyclic photophosphorylation. It is taking place in the thylakoid membranes because these are the light reactions. So for this, the photosystems, where are the photosystems located? They are located in the thylakoid membranes. In these membranes, they are located. So here, this process is taking place. What happens when light falls on PS2? Let us suppose this is your photosystem 2. Okay, now when light falls on it, this is how the light falls. So what happens? The light energy or the wavelength of suitable wavelength it is absorbed by all the accessory as well as the necessary pigments. Now the accessory pigments, whatever light energy they absorb, they, abs they pass those the, that energy to the reaction center. This is the reaction center which contains the main chlorophyll A molecule. So in PS2, it is the P700, chlorophyll A P700, which is good at absorbing 700 nanometer wavelength of light, which is the red color of the light. So this pigment is definitely absorbing the red light, but other pigments are also absorbing small, small portion of some other light and they will also transfer all the energy to the reaction center. So the reaction center would absorb Okay, this is by mistake. This PS2 is 680 and PS1 is 700, right? So that, that was just by mistake. So please do not get confused. So this reaction center will absorb the 680 nanometer wavelength. Of now what will happen when they absorb all this light? Now all the energy that is absorbed from the light energy is with the reaction center. So what will it do? The electrons will get excited. Now as we have studied in our junior classes, what happens when an electron gets excited? Let us suppose this is an atom. This is where you have the nucleus and these are the various orbits in which the electrons are revolving. Now let us suppose you have an electron here. If you supply a lot of energy to this electron, what can happen? That this electron can jump to the higher energy levels. So these are the higher energy levels. So if you want an electron to jump from lower energy level to higher energy levels, you have to supply some energy. So when a lot of energy is supplied to an electron, this will get excited and it will jump to the outer energy levels. So basically the electron will move away from the nucleus. So that is what happens when the electrons get excited. So similar is the case here, when the reaction center gives so much of energy, the electron gets excited and the electron jumps out and it is it goes to a primary acceptor which accepts the electron. So basically, electron gets excited to higher energy levels away from the nucleus. So this is what is happening here. This arrow shows that the electrons get excited to a higher energy level. And who is taking in that electron? That electron is taken in by a primary electron acceptor. There is some molecule there who will accept that electron. So electrons are picked up by the primary acceptor or the electron acceptor 
and then the electrons are passed to the electron transport system. So what is that electron transport system that we will discuss in the next slide. So from here the electron passes through the electron transport system. Please note that this electron, this excited electron, it not is not absorbed by any of the molecules which form the electron transport system. They just carry this electron and pass it to the next molecule. It is like a chain. For example, let us suppose if you are sitting on the first bench on your, in your class and your teacher gives you a notebook and asks you to pass it on to a student who is sitting on the last bench. What do you do? One way is you just stand up, walk in and go to the last bench and give it to him. The other way is if you do not want to move from your place. In that case, you can transfer that copy to this person sitting on the second bench. He can transfer it to the third bench. The third bench can transfer it to the fourth bench. And that means it can reach the last bench. Right? So the similar things happen, it happens here in the electron transport chain. The electron is not taken in or it is not absorbed by any of the molecules. It is just transferred from one molecule to the other molecule. So basically all the molecules which are a part of the electron transport system, they are all electron carriers and not acceptors. Right? So the electron excitation part is clear, the first step. Light falls here, the electrons get excited, they will go to higher energy levels, they are picked up by the electron acceptor or the primary acceptor and then they pass these electrons to the electron transport system. Now the question is, what happens in the electron transport system? Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.